This new wave of whistleblowers, uh, the Thomas Drake's, the Bill Bennies, the Kirk Weebies, the Ed Loomis's, uh, even the John Kiriakis, uh, the Chelsea Mannings, um, if it had not been for them and their examples, I might have replicated their mistakes. Individuals like uh, Thomas Drake, Bill Binney, uh, Kirk Weeby, Ed Loomis, uh, these individuals were sitting at the NSA and they went, well, if this is the case, why are we ordering huge amounts of electronic equipment and putting them inside the United States at telecommunications providers that aren't monitoring foreign communications, they're monitoring wholly domestic. They did it anyway, they did everything right. They even went to Congress. Uh, going to journalists was an act of last resort, and for that, the U.S. government destroyed their lives. Uh, none of them uh, continued in their career. Many of their pensions were threatened. Thomas Drake uh, was charged with multiple felonies. Bill Binney was pulled out of the shower at gunpoint. Uh, Chelsea Manning is currently serving 35 years in prison. And they went through proper channels. Uh, they went to uh, the uh, NSA's Inspector General. This is sort of an internal watchdog, right? Uh, it's supposed to be a relic of this 1978-era reform uh, of the church committee. It says, look, when there's problems in classified areas, you go to this watchdog in the government, you tell them what's going on, and they'll fix it. But the NSA's internal process, this watchdog that was supposed to be protecting the Constitution, it was supposed to be waiting for men like Thomas Drake to stand up and say, whoa, somebody's breaking the rules here. He responded like this. He came to me, someone who was not read into the program and told me that we were running amok essentially and violating the Constitution. There's no doubt in my mind I would have told him, you know, go talk to your management, don't bother me with this. I mean, you know, you, you, you did the, the minute he said, if, if he did say, you're using this to violate the Constitution, I, I mean, I probably would have stopped the conversation at that point. Quite frankly. They retired from NSA because of the spying they started on U.S. citizens and the massive scale that they did it. Since I designed uh, a lot of the programs that they're using, I want, to, I want to express the magnitude of the problem, not just for the United States, but for world democracy. Intelligence had gone out of control. Uh, whether it was our internal intelligence services in the United States, this is the FBI, the external intelligence services that spy on people who are sitting in the room there with you, uh, the CIA, the NSA. I, my real specialty is artificial intelligence and robotics and um, redefining what human beings will be in the future. I worked on a lot of these technologies and uh, I have a non-disclosure agreement with the government, which I absolutely respect. Um, I uh, work for the Department of, on projects for the Department of Defense, uh, CIA, uh, Justice Department, which has been in a thousand interviews that I have done uh, to expose some crimes against humanity. Um, and I've been collecting this data for over a decade uh, to understand what are the methods of these no-touch uh, brainwashing, mind control, and behavior modifications experiments that have come out of the CIA initially that it was discovered under a project that's a very generic name. They keep changing the project names, uh, MK Ultra. And they also use stocking methods that were developed under the FBI called Co Intel Pro Counterintelligence. They were doing not just Co Intel Pro, which was this kind of FBI program that was monitoring uh, the domestic political opposition in the United States, uh, not just CIA programs like MK Ultra, where they were funding U.S. and Canadian universities to experiment uh, on U.S. and Canadian citizens, college students. Uh, to try to develop sort of a, a method of crude brainwashing, sort of opinion changing through a combination of sleep deprivation uh, and uh, drugs like LSD. The FBI argued, look, they were monitoring uh, radical clerics uh, inside the United States uh, who they considered to be in contact. They said they suspected them to be in contact uh, with foreign agents. They didn't have any proof of this, but they said, look, maybe it's happening. 
The attorney general saw this case and said, all right, uh, we want to do this. I'll sign off on it personally. I'll put my reputation at risk. Such is the danger that this individual uh, presents, even though they're an American citizen. They authorized placing this individual on a watch list uh, in the event that there was some kind of national emergency, some kind of protest movement that really, really started to, shall they say, uh, destabilize the government. Uh, They'll bundle this guy off into camps. They said this man was the most dangerous, and this is quoting their words, that was the most famous civil rights leader in the history of the United States, Martin Luther King Jr. Saying he's a threat to national security, uh, they wrote letters based on information that they had uh, gathered. Uh, and they mailed one of these recordings to him along with a letter. This was when he was being awarded the Nobel Peace Prize and said, if you don't kill yourself uh, within a certain time period, I believe it was 36 days, might have been, uh, it was somewhere under 40 days, uh, they will reveal the truth, destroy his reputation, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, and I, again, this was, this was routine. This was the kind of thing that was happening there. When I got threatened in 1991, 92, 93 by some folks from the agency and uh, the FBI doing what I was doing, I said, really? Come put on the bracelets. You want to get on the dance floor? Let's get on the dance floor right fucking now. Uh, Thomas Drake, for going through these proper channels, uh, was hounded by the U.S. government. He was charged under the Espionage Act, the same laws they accused me of violating. This is a law that does not provide a fair trial. Uh, you are literally prohibited by law uh, from presenting your defense to the jury. You can't tell them why you did what you did. The same way that in the United States, even a murderer uh, can say, look, this person was threatening my life, and the jury can consider maybe this was self-defense, is denied to whistleblowers. Unfortunately, if I'm around, it's not. So there is constant monitoring from the NRO satellites of my location and what I'm doing. What this actually means is the same thing that it meant when they were monitoring Martin Luther King. National security doesn't mean what it sounds like to you. National security isn't about preventing foreign troops from landing on U.S. shores, right? We have the largest military spending in the world. We outspend the next 10 nations combined. We could fight a war with the next 10 nations combined and beat them handily. We are uh, an extraordinarily advanced nuclear nation. Uh, our national security is not in question, particularly from political points. But national security, from the perspective of an intelligence officer, whether they're, they're CIA, the NSA, or the FBI, means stability of the current political system. Well, that's called neuro-linguistic programming, and it, it's uh, it's an entire field in the Army, and uh, we use it in propaganda, um, but using this, what's often called voice-to-skull technology, literally typing subliminal messages and uh, overt messages to the target that no one else can hear. And the electromagnetic systems that can affect large segments of the population and target. Now these began to be developed quite in, in an advanced fashion by, by the 40s and 50s. And by 1956, uh, it had been accomplished to the point of state of the art. Projects, they're unacknowledged special access projects which are illegal. When you look at cases, for example, the case of Chelsea Manning, Again, she went to trial. The U.S. government was able to present their best evidence. Uh, they had control. It was a military court. They could hold uh, secret uh, proceedings for sections if they wanted to present classified information. Uh, and despite all of this, the government was asked by the judge to present evidence of any harm that came as a result. And again, remember, in the case of Chelsea Manning, these were things that were presented on WikiLeaks. Uh, they eventually made their way to the public in completely unredacted uh, and this, these were classified documents, I think roughly three quarters of a million, both military records and diplomatic records. And in court, in front of the judge, the U.S. government said, we can't demonstrate that anyone has been hurt, that anyone has died, and we aren't even going to try. So this is sort of just the way it is done. And because of the nature of 
top secret compartmented, top secret TSI, uh, TSSCI, top secret special compartmented intelligence. When you get to the unacknowledged level, nobody who's who, if, if unless you're in that compartment, you're not going to report anything out to any external person. I don't care who it is. Certainly not the CB, the Congressional Budget Office, or the auditors at KPMG, or whoever it is. They just don't report it out. It'll be reported out of out of these phony things. And this is why, when Rumsfeld said there's 2.3 trillion dollars unaccounted for. I mean, again, this was this was not a flaming liberal. It's not Abby Hoffman saying this. This is you know Secretary of Defense for George W. Bush and Dick Cheney saying this. Ten knowledge of it. Drug war has been created so that by making it illegal, it not only keeps it criminalized, but it cre- cre- creates a domain where so these super black illegal operations can kind of pluck the low-hanging fruit and have a very large, I'm talking hundreds of billions of dollars of funding by being kind of integrated with these criminal enterprises. The governments don't like to ask permission. Governments don't like to follow procedures. Governments don't like to be bound by the same laws that you and I are. And when we have this two-tiered system of justice, where when you are a whistleblower and you go to the number two lawyer in the NSA and you go, hey, you know, these new programs might be violating the law. They might be violating the Constitution. He tells you to get lost. He puts the Department of Justice on you. You get investigated. You lose your job. You lose your house. You lose your wife. You lose your freedom because you go to jail. But if you are the president and you torture, you have people killed, uh, people who you don't know, people who you don't have identified, people who just happen to be holding a cell phone. The spy agency tells you that at one point it was associated with terrorism. You will never see the inside of the court. Instead, you'll see a book. Instead, you'll get, you know, medals of freedom pinned around your neck. There was a CIA director, Bill Colby, who back some years ago, before, right before he died, was going to meet with a member of my board of directors and hand off one of these uh, free energy, for lack of a better word, uh, energy generation devices and some seed funding so we could quickly get it out to the world. This was, I think, in the mid-90s. And the week he was going to meet with us, he uh, was found floating down the Potomac River. A colonel who was best friends with uh, uh, CIA director Bill Colby uh, told us personally um, that he was, in fact, killed because he was going off the reservation and leaving the so-called majestic cabal behind. This is not a radical departure uh, from the operational intelligence agencies. This is what they do in the dark. This is what happens when you're not looking. This is what happens when they get enough leash, when they get comfortable enough that they won't be held to the account uh, of the public or the law when they go too far.